Good morning. Hope everybody had a great weekend. What a weekend for football. And I guess tonight it ends with uh, Oregon and Ohio State uh, <clears throat> going at it. And uh, I think everybody thinks Oregon might win it, but a lot of the teams that were supposed to win this weekend didn't. So um, you never know when it's done. Uh, I didn't do a very good job of hand handicapping this weekend. Um, bet more on uh, sentiment than um, on paper. But anyway, at least the pack prevailed. <clears throat> and uh, I don't see any way for Seattle not to win the whole thing. They look pretty darn tough. But that may not be the case either. So anyway, I hope you had a great weekend. It was still cool here. Uh, our warm-up begins at the end of the week when they going to put us back into 50 degree temperatures. So uh, that bulge of warmer than normal air continues over the west and sometimes it moves east of the Rockies. Uh, and the colder than normal weather uh, seems to slam through Montana, the Dakotas, <clears throat> and on into the east coast. So still winter for most of us, which the calendar says it should be. Uh, no news out over the weekend. Uh, probably the biggest news, not one high U.S. official made it to Paris for the uh, three to four million person march. All other world, most of the other world leaders did make it there. Um, it garnered headlines uh, that showed pictures of everybody that was there and then <clears throat> who didn't show up and the United States didn't show up. So um, uh, again, you have this fractured leadership or lack of cohesive leadership. Um, but again, the Western government still will not address what we're up against. They will not define the problem, will not define who the enemy is. They will not call um, uh, terrorism by its name, and they will not cite the source of it. And it's militant uh, Islam. And unfortunately, uh, they kill anybody that um, they deem convenient to kill. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be an infidel. In fact, most of them that are killed are not infidels. Most of them are brother Muslims. So until the world comes to grips with it, it's going to be pretty hard to defeat these people. <clears throat> so where are we today? No news. The stock markets are up off of conjecture about when QE one will start for the European Central Bank. The ECB is still talking again. A trial balloon that's being floated down is 500 billion bucks per month. And over two years, that would get them to the $1.2 trillion worth of bad debt that most people figure are what uh, Europe's banks have on their books from uh, bad sovereign debt from the pigs, nations, and others. So this trillion dollar figure <clears throat> gets um, it's a pretty common number when you look at uh, what's causing problems for the market of the world's economy uh, real estate loans subprime automobile loans uh, student loans uh, sovereign debt in Europe etc so uh, the, the world is flush with debt that may or may not be repaid <clears throat> my guess is, is a lot of it will not be repaid and who will pick up the tab? The taxpayers, which is the way it always is. It's just the way it works. OK, we got volume 24 to 28. That's resistance. And we have volume starting down here in the uh, 12 to as low as 4. So this is pretty good support down here. A structural trade right here would be against this high volume number. So we've got our 9 to 13 is by 1. It may take a while to get here. Uh, we may not be able to crack this area right in here. Uh, the um, 14 to 17 area might be support. Got a B overnight. We've had nothing but selling since the market opened, so my guess is we're going to head a little bit lower. But I don't think we break the market. We'll put the sell at 23 to 27, and then 31 to 03. I think we do find buyers today because of tomorrow's three-year auction and because there really isn't any news. Go down, get stops below where we're trading right now, get everybody thinking we're headed lower, then bring it back would be my guess. And quite often on Mondays, we don't have a lot to work with. Um, there's no news. It's pretty quiet. Sometimes it takes two, three hours for the market to sort itself out and yield the direction, and we might be in that case this morning. 
So I'd like to buy nines to thirteens. Uh, the buy might come at seventeen or better. Don't know. We'll just have to see. But I think the market is pointed lower, and we got a chance to buy it on the cheap. Okay, we got volume down here in the 28 area. We've got a volume node up here between, say, what, 26, basically 28 to the buck, 48.04, and 48 held right here. So we have pretty good. So we got support down here, well below. So we'll put a buy one to 29, and might take fives to get in. Don't know. For that matter, it might take 11s or 12s to get in, but we'll. We'll circle five. I think we are headed lower. We're got, probably going to get some help from the knob spread. Then we're 21 to 25 for buy two. Uh, looking at the sell, uh, 19 to 23. Again, playing for some knob spread contra contraction. And then 27 to 31. When the market sells, uh, we usually um, get some contraction in the knob spread, and uh, that's been pretty consistent as traders move the market around and <clears throat> basically scalp. Okay, gold came off quite a bit over the weekend. Did make it up to 12.30, and then sold. So uh, again, I, I think the um, this uncertainty in the Ukraine, this uncertainty parts of Asia, uh, this uncertainty about which governments will hold, which will fail. <clears throat> Last week, Spain's biggest bank uh, hit the the news hit the tape that they were in serious need of recapitalization. So, I think we got ourselves a twelve ten minus market and a 25 plus to get started. So 25, 27, sell one, 29, 31, sell two. And on the buy side, we'll make 10 to 12, buy one. It may take 15s to get in. This depends on how strong the stock market is this morning and five to seven for buy two. I mean, the stock market is up, I think 11 points from Friday's close, really on nothing far as news goes on the talk of um, the ECB has to uh, start its QE program soon and for two years the ECB has been really really effective at rhetorically moving the market and supporting the markets with say and to take concrete action much to speak of so I don't think they will uh, change things up until they're forced to. Would you whip out your checkbook if you didn't have to? Probably not. OK, um, our 75 area down here is probably a pretty good buy. Then 50 to 60 for buy two. I do not like the long side of this market. It's not initiating trades, positions. Um, 15 to 25, sell one. And then 50 to 60 for sell two. Why do we are we short um, the uh, euro consistently because of the weakness of the European economy and this act of terrorism uh, last week in France will not strengthen the economies. I'm going to put an article up. Uh, by Spingler, that's David P. Goldman, later today, uh, that really, really uh, outlines Europe's dilemma. Europe allowed heavy immigration of um, North Africans, Muslims for the most part, <clears throat> because their birth rates were um, below replacement. And they thought that that would, be, would revitalize the economy and keep it going so you'd have enough workers to pay for the retirees. Um, 
but what they failed to do was to assimilate these populations. And immigration's not bad if you assimilate, but immigration's pretty bad for the long-term health of any country if you don't assimilate. And that's what's happening in the United States right now. We're about 10 years behind these people. Um, and people talk about we're a nation of immigrants, but there have been periods when we shut down and stopped immigration. Uh, so we could assimilate these people and make them Americans. Right now that's not encouraged because political parties view these people as potential votes and divide and conquer is a time-proven way to get votes for, popu for um, populous or popular politicians. And so that's the course that's being pursued right now. And uh, it has really, really negative um, implications over the long haul. But the gist of the Spengler article is that um, France is probably um, beyond saving right now, being able to do what they have to do to clean up this um, uh, must that they have. Can't protect themselves internally. OK, crude. 45.22 is a price that the Chartists have picked out as where we're headed. We've been talking about 45 bucks, uh, simply because it's the next round number. Uh, they say it's the long-term trend line that had lows of 10.35. And it was some 15 bucks, and then um, 30 dollars. And the crude contract is in contango. And what that means is the back, back months are higher than the front month. Uh, people will buy on the cheap today, but they think the price of crude oil is too low. that It'll come back later on. Um, and so we're in a situation where the right piece of news or something that come out could uh, start crude oil to consolidate. But right now, uh, most of the world thinks it's headed to 45. A Saudi spokesman, Alweed, if I pronounced his name correctly, uh, said that we won't see $100 crude oil again. That was too high. Um, and that Saudi Arabia and Russia would not stop producing. Uh, so there will be no cutback in supplies. Next big OPEC meeting is at the first of the summer. We'll see if they blink. <clears throat> so here we are. We're headed lower. Um, the uh, 45, 46, 50 area. So let's make um, 25 to 50. We're going to make buy one. And then 45, 75, 46 for buy two. We're going to lower it a little bit. And on the uh, sell side, we're going to make 47, 50, 75, sell one. And 48, 48 and a quarter, sell two. Like the short side of the market. OK, the E-mini, um, it's up 11 points when I looked at it last. Um, there's no news to tie to why it's up and why it's that high. It just is. So what you see right now, let's go look at the F1 screen, is a trading range. And we've got about a 50-point correction from the high. So it would be nice if I got it on the right one. There we go. The eighty five areas a hundred points the thirty areas about fifty points so fifty um, fifty points off the high is kind of holding right now uh, so we got a high at eighty five eighty nine somewhere in there i forget and we got a low of eighty five so just over a hundred point correction so got pretty good resistance starting at sixty and right now we've got really really good support in the um thirty thirty five area we're trading technically. There's no news to drive today's trading, and no reason to think that we'll break out or explode um, one way or the other. So the first sell getting stops above the overnight session highs, 49 to 51. And our second sell is 54, 56. 60 is where resistance is. On the uh, buy side, 35, 37. And I'm going to put a question mark at 40. If we come back down and 40 holds, we have to get long to go up and see if we 
can go up and uh, test 50, that would be a 10 point range and then our 30, 32 will be by two. No news to drive the trading today. Uh, the thing that got the market excited was the supposed coming QE1 from formally announced by the European Central Bank. It hasn't happened yet, folks, but everybody says it's coming. And January 22nd is the day that they picked for that. Take at least 20 minutes to get everything up and posted and around. I'm going to get busy on that and see you in a few.